Oh, how's it going, Bruce? Welcome back to the Lighthouse of Guiding Flames. I think we must be getting pretty close to the end here because uh, we've done a full circle at this point, I reckon, but shit's about to get real, so strap on in. Like, seriously, look at the background. Shit. Athani's family stood before her. Her father, mother, sister, and brother. Their faces were covered by a grim and shiveringly scary shadow. The girl couldn't understand where the Keeper took her. The world around her was constantly changing, akin to scarlet smoke, and the silhouettes in it were hazy. Where am I? Mummy? Daddy? Nathani wanted to go to her family, but she couldn't. Her limbs were not responding, as if they were tied down to tightly with belts. Huh? What? You're bound by the ties of duty. Duty? Duty. Promises. Conscience. They turn into unbreakable chains that you can't shake off in fertile, the fertile soil of your heart. Oh. You'd have to try really hard to loosen them. But I want to fulfill my duty. I don't need to get rid of it, right? Some wear their chains willingly, dress them up in unmeasurable pride and self-conceit, and some chain their inner monsters that turn a person into a wild beast. Do as you wish. Now I'm confused. Yeah, giving speeches is not exactly my thing. Do you want to know if you're ready to sacrifice yourself for your entire family? Here you go. Araki's voice disappeared and everything became soundless. A dead silence reigned the world. It ringed in Athani's ears like an annoying insect. Athani squirmed, unsure of what to expect. Is she going to get killed? For the sake of her family? This is not real, right? Just practice. A fictional situation. I I'll try dying. For you. Athani's throat was clenched by spasms, but she managed to force the words out of her mouth. A group of people that stood before her nodded simultaneously. Stones appeared in their hands. Oh. Why? Don't tell me. Will I be stoned to death? Huh. Why is she so surprised? Wasn't Araki going to test her resolve? Let's begin then. Nathani shut her eyes. Nothing happened. The girl opened one of her eyes to check what was going on. Was she readying herself for the stoning for nothing? Her family was standing still just like statues. Or corpses. Horrifying. Why aren't they doing anything? Will they stand like that forever? Don't worry, I'm ready to die. I... I want to try protecting you. Yes. Athani was trying to convince herself even though she didn't feel the resolve she was speaking of. Will you die for us, Athani? It's all practice. All fake. Yes. Will you sacrifice yourself? Yes. Will you save my baby? Yes. Will you throw away your dreams of adventure and happy life? Yes, 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 I love you. That's why... She had to die. I'm tired. Please finish what you came here for. Nathani closed her eyes again and for the second time felt no stones hit her. Goodbye, Athani. Her sister didn't move, but Athani felt a sharp pain in her chest, as if something hard and heavy hit her. However, the stone was still in her sister's hand. Her words hurt more than any sort of physical pain. Goodbye, Athani. Athani didn't want to hear those horrible words ever again. They hurt her heart much more than any torture could. Not you again. A straw doll fell to the girl's feet, identical to its sister's that Athani made when she was in the dungeon. Where did it come from? Why is it here? Goodbye, Athani. Ugh. Another hit to her chest and more sharp pain. A new doll at her feet. What's going on? Goodbye, Athani. Athani felt little pieces of her heart tearing away with each word. It was unbelievably scary. But the dolls, the more dolls Athani had at her feet, the easier she felt. And that's not quite right. Emptiness was spreading in Athani's heart with every new doll. Is this what death feels like? Who knows? I mean, you do. You're dead. Why do you show me all of this? You want to try it for yourself. Shall I stop? Aspen will give me a hard time if he found out I tortured you. No, I'll stay. I must endure it. Alright. If Athani gives up now, she'll never be able to sacrifice herself for real. Die for us. We'll live on without you. Take my place in the vengeful deity's jaws. Throw away your dreams. The more dolls appeared at Athani's feet, the less emotion she felt. It's for the better. You'll fulfill your duty. You'll save us. You'll let us live. Many, many dolls. But there was no pain, no doubts, no despair or regret. It's fine. Nathani will die. She accepts it. 
She'll happily throw herself into death's embrace. She'll disappear without leaving a trace, apart from the dolls filled her with emotions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Athani. Thank you. It's fine. It's right. The dolls burst out with a bright flame. Straw burns fast. Light-coloured twigs curled up as if trying to defend themselves from the dancing orange petals and then fell apart into hot ash. Feeling and emotions of the girl named Athani turned to dust alongside them. Is this death? Are these the final moments of her life? An infinite void? Endless indifference? This is... Stop. Stop it. Athani stood at the seashore again. Araki was looking at her with, a wor with worry and burning her with his unusually blue eyes. So what do you say? Do you feel the fear of death? Do you feel the burden of when your life is in danger? Are you sure you're ready to die for your family? I don't know, it was... weird. I don't like it when people throw words around like it's nothing. Only an inherently strong and honourable person can really sacrifice himself for the sake of others. I'm not sure I fit such a beautiful description. Well, at least now you won't back down when the time you m to make your final decision will come. Really? I won't? Of course. My lessons never go to waste. I'm a natural teacher. It's just he was a teacher in survival and the sense of danger. Athani didn't know if she was ready to ever repeat that lesson. So, did you figure out anything? The girl shook her head, unsure of how to reply properly. The parting words from her family hurt her, and she felt nasty. Even though she felt abandoned and lonely, their gratitude still made her heart squeeze from lament. However, can one ever put their own grieving in the life of their family in the different sides of the scale? If Athani's sacrifice will save her family, is it really that scary to die? Of course it is. And probably much more unpleasant than an Iraqi's vision. But somehow, Athani felt that, even to that test, she would agree without a second thought, because she loves her family that much. Well, I guess I've said and shown you all I could. I've got to admit, it was quite entertaining, but alas, my path is waiting for me. Soon, I'll be reincarnated. Aren't you afraid? Why would I be? I just follow the rules of being. And I'm afraid. I don't know what fear is. I just showed my guests how refreshing is the sense of danger. Well, have any idea what to do next? Not really. I know I need to act, but I'm not sure how. When faced with danger, a person realises what is most important for them. As if. Don't force me to repeat myself. Enough. The lesson is over. I'm done with you. I'm too old for such lengthy conversations. Are you leaving? Yes, I'll move on, since I finished my task. Happy reincarnation. I'm sure you're going to be a beautiful flower. I'm not going to become a flower. <laughs> and you, think about what I told you. Maybe that way you'll be able to find the way to the right port easier. Thank you very much, Mr. Araki. You really helped me. Araki didn't reply, just waved farewell and headed towards the forest. Ithani looked at his back for a while, then turned away and went back to the lighthouse. She didn't know what to do, but she realised that it might be a good idea to think hard on whether her parents were that scary, and where the real threat, where was the real threat coming from. Day 10, I believe? Yeah. See, I can remember things occasionally. Astaban was happy to see his guest. Be they very loud and unpredictable, a traveller by the name of Gramium was just that. She, unlike Kima, round, roamed the seas with without any particular destination, simply enjoying the ride. Athani was listening to Graham's stories in awe. What wonderful worlds she visited. Athani also wanted to see magic castles, unknown animals, and unbelievably beautiful flowers, which, according to Graham, could grow even on stone walls. And this is the last time I was in a country where people moved on giant plants that looked like boats. Graham waved her forefinger energetically after thrusting it up. Just imagine this, Athani. Roads, full of bright-coloured, good-smelling buds carrying travellers inside. Wow. It was like a flower parade or something. How many stories like that do you have, I wonder? Look, Athani is steaming from her ears already. She'll leave the lighthouse with you if she if this continues. I'd be happy to have a companion. Oh. Hmm? What's with that gloomy face? Filled with all the sadness in the world? I don't think I can go with you. Why not? It doesn't seem like Astaban forces you to stay here. You can leave whenever you want. No, no, it's not that. I'm just not sure if it's the right thing to do. Sometimes sailors worry um, such about such insignificant things. I just go where my heart tells me to. 
Seeing Athani completely down, Graham squinted her green eyes and laughed heartily. But if by any chance doubt grips me, I visit Astaban and look at the lamp flames. Graham almost burnt her eyes on her first visit here. She rushed to the lamp without asking for permission. I had big trouble catching you. You should be more careful, Graham. Well, it can happen to anyone. <laughs> A traveller to the bone. Oh, come now, don't be grumpy. I'm caution personified. Do you like the lamp that much? In some cases, in some senses, Athani understood Graham's feelings. The lamp flames were alluring and calming. It granted hope and tranquility among the cold, agnostic flame. When Athani was in the boat, she gained the determination the moment she saw the clear amber light, even though she felt lost and abandoned just before. Graham's voice became dreamy. There's something special about the lamp, something that makes me forget all my troubles. Your troubles? It doesn't matter, everyone has them, no? I can't argue with that. Are you worried about something too, Miss Graham? Do you want to look at the lamp, eh, Athani? The girl gave a questioning look to the keeper and he nodded. Why not? Just remember. Yeah, yeah, safety above all. Athani and Grab rubbed some healing poultice into their eyelids and went upstairs to the floor with the lamp. It shined so bright, even with all the protection, Athani's eyes teared up a little, and she had to look the other way. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. When I started doubting my way, I come here and look at the flames. You... have doubts? Graham laughed without enthusiasm. Everybody has their doubts. Sometimes you wake up, look in the mirror, and question if the person reflected there is really you. Even I have moments like that. Sometimes I feel scared. I'm not a robot, after all. The unknown is both interesting and scary. Not every world is filled with flowers and happiness. There are dangerous worlds, too. You're scared, but you still go there? Well, those things are not exclusive. I don't get it. Fear kills all your courage. It stops you from taking an important step. Fear is my enemy. Graham was lost in thought for a while, as if the difficult conversation was sapping all of her power. Your enemy, huh? Maybe. Maybe. But you just need to give it a smackin'. Even if I'm too scared? Yeah. Even if the horror stops me from breathing? Yeah. Every person faces something horrific enough to steal their breath sooner or later. But what they do next is another matter entirely. I... I can fight my fears for my family? Hey, it's a red one again. I don't know if it's good. <laughs> I was too scared, but now I have to hold myself together for the sake of my family. Graham nodded happily. An honourable decision. There are things much more important than your own fears, right? Yeah, love for your family is a very powerful spell. A spell? Sounds nice. You bet. Will it help me? Well, if your love is really strong, then why not? When love shines as strongly as the lamp's fire, it rids you of any fear. Such romantic words. Hey, don't eavesdrop. Fear can sometimes protect. You, Graham, for example, should fear the lamp, or your strong attachment can cost you your sight. Ah, oh, here we go again. And don't you try arguing with me. <laughs> love for my family, huh? And what's your family like, Miss Graham? Graham almost jumped up from surprise. My family? Yes, you don't want to talk about it? Well, I don't know. Graham spun around and her long hair sparkled in the lamp's light. I think I can tell you. I'm sure everyone in your family is cheerful, just like you. I can't agree with that. I was raised at the sea, where you have to do terrible things just to stay alive. My family killed others, every day. Horrible times. Killed? Who? Nathani's body became cold. It wasn't the story she expected. People, beasts, everyone who tried to kill them. It wasn't any different, and I'm not proud of the past. But why didn't you stop? Because I was scared. I didn't want to die, and I had someone to protect. Your family? My sister. I protected her and she protected me, that's how we lived. You see, I wasn't on good terms with my parents, but I was tightly knit with my sister. We were always together, I was ready to kill for her sake, and do other more underhanded things. But why? I love her. She was my true family. She was? Don't get sad. Like I said, not every world is filled with happiness and smiles. There are worlds where you have to fight for your life. Was it tough? Yes, but I didn't lose my mind, only thanks to my sister. I really love her. That's why I had to. Did something happen? She was stronger than me, tough and courageous, but sometimes she would cross the line. She crossed the line? She was always painfully straightforward. Her honesty and lack of modesty angered our parents. That's why they made a decision that seemed logical for their social status. And what was that decision? To kill her, of course, so she won't be an eyesore. 
You lived in a horrible world. Can't argue with that. There was only one way to resolve things. Conversation was for fools. Anyway, I could take the side of my parents, or the side of my sister. I chose the latter. What happened next? Did she kill your parents? Bullseye. If she didn't kill them, they would have killed her. A pity, but there was nothing we could do. I stood and watched in silence. For your sister's sake? Yeah. It was a difficult choice, either them or her. I need to make it one way or the other. A difficult choice. Athani's elder sister probably felt the same. Either let Athani live, or her whole family and her child. A difficult choice, a horrible one. And where's your sister now? Graham frowned. It's true that our world is filled with all sorts of evil, but even when we have a code of honour, those who risk taking their parents' lives are sentenced to death. Death seemed to be the solution for everything in Graham's world. Obviously, it only came to trial if you're caught red-handed. My sister got caught. She died? No, I couldn't let her die, especially after everything she went through. I took her place. How do I put it? We looked very alike. Both of us smeared in earth and blood. It wasn't hard to replace her. And your sister agreed? Oh no, she was furious. She wanted to answer for her own deeds, but I wasn't that easy. I took her place after all, confessed to the murder, and awaited to be burnt at the stake. Burnt at the stake? Like I said, my homeworld was someone else. Oh. I was waiting for my death. I knew I was right. I made a tough decision to save my sister, and I didn't want to back down, whatever it cost me. Nathani got lost in thought. The female traveller's story reminded her of her own problem. Graham chose the life of her sister and sacrificed herself because her sister was so precious to her. Should Athani do the same? But you didn't die, right? Well, you're standing right here now. Or are you a ghost like Mr. Araki? He's not a ghost. How should I put it? I showed courage and took my sister's place, but when the end was near, I chickened out. You chickened out? I ran away. Got scared and ran off. Yeah, yeah, I know. To tell you the truth, I didn't hope for salvation where I, when I ran. I was out of despair. They would have caught me for sure, but then a miracle happened and I ended up at the lighthouse. At Mr. Astaban's? No, a certain mad keeper helped Graham. Not mad, but carefree. Even more carefree than Mr. Astaban? I'm quite serious. All you do is drink tea. Isn't that a pretty complicated and challenging process? Not at all. <sighs> I've lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Ah, oh, right, the lighthouse. I ended up at the lighthouse. Of course, I couldn't skip on a chance to travel to other worlds. I didn't want to go back to my home world, since I'd be a plank of wood and a pyre if I went there. What about your sister? Is she alive? I've no idea. They should have left her alone. I hope. Anger and sadness resounded in Graham's voice. Sometimes I regret running away. I regret my cowardice. I decided to save her, didn't I? But I lacked determination. <laughs> but now it's too late to suffer, right? It's too late. I guess my story turned out to be pretty dark, huh? <laughs> it's saddening. That's life for you. We all need to fear the, bear the burden of our choices. The burden of choices. Regret. Nathani didn't want to regret a choice she would make. If she decided she chose death, she would go through with it. Or else she'd have to feel remorse till the end of her days like Miss Graham. The female traveller protected her sister and Nathani found her choice courageous and honourable. Should Nathani make the same choice? Save her family. Thank you. Your story really helped me. Is that so? <laughs> well, it's a good thing nobody fell into depression. Such sad stories don't suit you at all. Oh, let me tell you a new one then. One day, Astaban decided to go for a swim in the sea. No, why would you tell that one? I want to hear it, Miss Graham, please. You shouldn't. Graham wore a carnivorous smile. Like I said, the dark atmosphere was gone in an instant. They continued chatting until Graham went to face new adventures. Even though the female traveller's story turned out to be sad and dark, Athani still felt much better after hearing it. Miss Graham's words made Athani think of vital things, and make the right decision became a little bit easier. The doubts in the girl's heart cleared as if a magic lamp lighted it up. Day 11? How many days did we start at last time? We must be getting there, right? Athani was in for an unpleasant surprise. Astaban told her that she'd need to leave soon. You can be a guest at the lighthouse, but you can't become a tenant. Athani had to agree with the, with the keeper's arguments, but she still wasn't sure if she'd be, if she'd be able to make the right choice. She wanted to talk to Astaban, Graham, and Kima some more. And even with the keep, keeper Araki, who she thought to be scary at first, you can write us letters. You can do that? Of course. Don't forget us, okay? Esteban explained to Athani how important communication was. 
If people stay silent, they can never reach an understanding with each other. She never talked to her family about the ritual, not in a serious way anyways. What if she told them everything she thought without fearing her dad's anger? Would that change anything? She was afraid of being judged. She was afraid that they call her selfish, accuse her of risking her family's well-being. But was it really okay to say nothing? Esteban understood how sad and anguished Athani was. Want to take a walk? A walk? Where? We have a surprise for you. Everything that happened at the lighthouse was magical, so Athani's heart skipped a beat as soon as she imagined what surprise could the Keeper prepare for her. They reached the beach. Now we just wait for the wind. Wind? But there's no wind here. The water in the forest is still. Don't be surprised. The wind comes when it's about time to say goodbye. Today it'll greet us and calm down, waiting for your departure. Oh. It helps to carry the boat with the seafarer away from the coast. Athani sighed dejectedly. The wind is special and only exists at the lighthouse. There are different types of wind. Well, farts are one. I mean, they just blow and that's it. Astaban bursts, bursts out laughing with a cheeky smile on his face. Don't you know, there are at least 2,000 different types, different wind types in the world. 2,000? Yeah. Amazing. The one blowing at the lighthouse is number 1,805. It helps sailors reach their destination port safely. And who counted them? I didn't know there were so many of them. One of my guests told me that. He was a wind collector. The wind didn't appear for some reason. Athani turned her sad gaze toward Astaban. Did I do something wrong? The keeper replied after a pause. You're probably not quite ready yet. I'm not ready? The wind doesn't feel the power of your determination. You still have doubts, Athani. But don't worry. You still have a bit more time. Athani let out a heavy sigh. She felt guilty because she managed to spoil Astaban's surprise. They returned to the lighthouse without feeling even the slightest of breezes. Another day. Twelve? Yep. It was time to say goodbye. The coast was as silent as ever and Athani enjoyed her time of silence to the last bit. Wherever she would go next, things would never be that silent and calm. It's time to say goodbye. Yes. Have you decided where you'll be going? Probably. You'll make the right choice. Can you share some of your determination with me, Mr. Astaban? The Keeper's lips were touched by a slight, slightly nostalgic smile. I did all I could. I finally looked at the boat, the same boat that brought her here. It was so long ago. You lied to me after all, Mr. Astaban. He said the time didn't exist at the lighthouse, but it was always right here beside me. When we were reading the books, when we had tea or talked to the guests, it flew like it had wings, and I couldn't catch it. Our time is up, Mr. Astaban. It always runs out. You may be right. For me as a keeper, time feels different, but I see your point. I also feel that the time of our fun times is gone. But it's not a reason for grief. New worlds and new times await you. You can't be regretful when there's a myriad of opportunities waiting over the horizon. You're right. Only a bad sailor would choose a lousy port for their ship. You'll reach a good place, I'm sure. A place I'm supposed to be in? A place where you'll want to go. Yes, of course. What are you feeling right now, Athani? What does your heart tell you? Man, what do I want to do? I don't want to go back there and die. Move on. Yellow again. Wonderful words. Thank you. The girl was afraid of the dark sea, but she couldn't stay at the lighthouse forever. And not just because of the rules. Athani wanted to change. Her heart told her to venture into the endless water's surface, as if it was a sailor who couldn't see his life without the distant lands. A new future awaited the girl. The right future. Athani. I have a gift for you. Oh, you shouldn't have. I can't take away your alarm clock. I won't give you my alarm clock. It's Shenron. Here, take this. A brooch in the form of a strange snake-like or lizard-like creature fell into the girl's hand. What's this? Don't you know? It's a dragon. In some worlds, there are legends that this creature guards the stars. You like the stars, right? Yes. They help the sailors find their way at night. Lamp's fire is just like one big star, isn't it? Estevan simply smiled at those words. This dragon looks like you, Mr. Astaban. You protect the stars and you protect the lighthouse. And you both do it for us, seafarers. You can hold on to this brooch. I'll give it to someone who needs it more. Someone who needs it more? With this brooch, you'll give some of your soul, your feelings, and your worries. Who knows? 
Maybe someone is waiting for you to open up your feelings. Thank you. I think I know what to do now. I'm glad I can help you sh help show you the right way. This this is very important, Mr. Esteban. It's very important to know that someone will help when you lose your way. The girl walked up to the boat. The time had come. It's time for me to depart, Mr. Esteban. Good luck, Athani. I'll never forget you, never. No matter how much time passes, I'll still remember you. Me too. Goodbye, Athani. Don't say that. I don't like that word. I've had enough sad goodbyes. Then see you again? See you again, Mr. Astaban. I promise you I will. Athani got into the boat. The waves carried her from the grey coast by themselves. Astaban's figure turned into a small dot. See ya. Athani had no doubts anymore. A new future awaited her. The water's surface was unending, but there has to be a coast somewhere, right? There are no seas without land. Seas should be surrounded by it. Athani knew that. Then... Was she going in circles? It can't be. The girl still couldn't make a decision. Even after depending on the lighthouse's keeper's hospitality, she didn't choose the way she'll follow. I still don't know. Sorry, Mr. Astaban, I couldn't decide after all. The destiny... The decision proved to be too difficult. Athani's heart was still tormented by the painful contradictions. I don't know. I don't know. Athani was consumed by doubts. A boat sailed through the fog. How long had it been? No one could tell. The boat sailed. Boat afloat? <laughs> That's what boats do. Athani still couldn't decide. She didn't make her choice. She couldn't find her way. Should we embark on another journey? I guess that's an ending. Not a good ending, but an ending. We're going to wrap this one up here because we're out of time for today. But I guess in the next episode we're going to try and jump in and see if we can get to a true ending. Or at least as many endings as we can achieve. I don't know if there is a true ending, but yeah, I guess there is. We shall see. Anyway, till then, thanks for watching Bruce. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.